Hello. Today, uh, using this uh, simple model of the mini meal, uh, I would like to uh, see what is the geometry behind the uh, recommended procedure of uh, trimming the mini meal. Uh, let's assume uh, this is our mini meal table, and uh, this is the column which is movable okay we can move it to the left to the right and uh, it has uh, rails and uh, it has the carriage which is running up and down along the rails and it has uh, adjusted in the previous aligned in the previous episode uh, spindle housing okay uh, what is the uh, recommended uh, procedure for uh, minimal trimming uh, we have to use a single or doubled uh, um, test or dial indicator we have to mount it let's assume we have doubled we uh, have to mount it into the spindle and uh, we have to get the readings uh, in the farthest left position on the table and the farthest right position on the table. As soon as uh, uh, we adjust the column And as a, as a result of the adjustment is equal readings in the left and in the right, we can say that our spindle axis is perpendicular to the table. Okay, that's clear, that's clear. But there is one uh, small detail. As soon as we have the same readings in the left and in the right, we cannot say that our column is perpendicular to the table. We only have the spindle axis perpendicular. Why? Let's assume that initially we have some angle between the column and the table. And let's assume that we have some angle between the spindle housing and the column. Okay? When we read the same numbers on the dial indicators, when we have the spindle axis perpendicular to the, to, to, to the table, Right? But this position of the spindle axis is a result of integrated compensation of the angle between the spindle housing and column, and column and the table. Okay? What that means? That means that we are absolutely okay with this alignment, with this trimming, for the operations that does not require headstock moving. So, we are okay with operations when the headstock spindle head is locked and we move only in horizontal directions x and y we can fly cut we can do slotting we can do face cutting okay as soon as we have to run the operation any operation uh, which requires the movement of the spindle up and down we have problems let's see why Let's uh, assume that we need uh, 
pretty simple driven operations. Let's assume we have some part and we have to uh, center drill it in some point. After that we have to drill it uh, through with uh, uh, some regular uh, spiral uh, drill bit. And uh, finally we have to open it with a bigger drill bit or uh, we have to bore it to the required uh, dimension uh, with uh, boring head. Okay, let's do it. First, we mount our short comparing to the regular drill bits center drill. Okay, we have to lower the spindle head and we index our part to drill the proper place, proper point. Okay? After we drill it with center drill, we have to replace our center drill with the regular drill bit. Now, what can we see? The end of our center uh, drill bit is now shifted from the initial point. Why? Because we not only move the spindle head up, we move it into the direction where our column is inclined. Okay, if we mount our bigger drill bit or a boring head, we will see that the shift is even bigger. Okay, and this is absolutely normal for this type of alignment. We have to understand that for some operations with this type of alignment we are absolutely accurate, like I said, for uh, face cutting, uh, for slotting, for fly cutting, and we have to take some precautions when we do operations which require mo moving up and down and down the uh, spindle housing. Okay, so in this case, uh, maybe we have to re-index our part in horizontal position after each uh, tool change. Okay, so uh, this is uh, how I understand the geometry behind the uh, minimal um, trimming process. And uh, that's all for today. Uh, Happy New Year and uh, see you in the next episode.